yo what is up everyone it's your man i do a barber and i'm back with another tutorial but this one is how to do an edge up a full edge up beard razor work and everything so my client he's a week removed from a haircut and we're gonna go right in so i'm starting off with the neck taper i actually like to start with the back first if i'm doing a full edge up i start with the back first i work my way to from the bottom to the top just the way they work in construction, they work their ways from the bottom to the top, building the foundation and base first, then working my way up. So as you see, I'm, I'm not taking his neck taper in. I'm just following the natural curve from which it leaves his, that little curve area. I'm not bringing that in. You see at the, the top portion where I started, that's where I like to start right there. I start right there because that's where it naturally comes in and sometimes you have to take a little bit off to match where that curve starts and that's perfect but you don't want to go too much further and you see the neck line it's a nice v-shaped it's not pushed in too far and in this case we're going to do a round back uh now there's many different versions you can do a u-shape square shape or round this case we typically taper him when he actually gets a full haircut but this one we did a u and as you can see, it's lopsided, but we're going to fix that. And that's mainly due to me doing this for YouTube because I'm actually having to reach across my client to try and do the edge up. So a lot of things I, I started to notice that when I'm doing edge ups and certain ports of edge ups on YouTube, they actually initially come out lopsided, which in real life, they don't happen. That doesn't happen when I'm not recording a video. I've noticed that's something I'll have to adjust for doing things on YouTube. Uh, but now we're going to go around the ear. Now, when you're doing this, you want to use the corners. Be very careful because you, there's not much room here for one. And then two, you don't want to lay the blade flat because you'll end up ruining another part of the edge up. I've done this personally, so I'm speaking from experience here. Now, when you're doing an edge up, one thing that's very important is each individual hair follicle and real barbers know this but when i say this is that each individual hair follicle makes a big difference in an edge up just one hair follicle can throw off an edge up so as you see i'm using my corners and this is where it gets dangerous where you really need to use the corner that little curve right there over the ear you don't want to go too far and as you saw my client his natural line it is a little bit higher some people's are lower like some people grow hair right there on the crease of their ear and you actually have to you know create the edge up so everyone's a little bit different i've seen clients that have had their arch around their ear naturally a lot higher than this one so each client's different but you don't want to white wall them and make it seem overly exaggerated and overly unnatural so now i'm going to come back with the razor i go around the ear with the razor as you can see this is an exposed blade on the feather artist club razor and now I'm using the point in the heel. So right now I'm using the heel and I use the point. So you, you got to adjust as necessary. And now I'm using the point, just getting each individual hair follicle. And like I said, like some of these things from a distance, you may not see. Maybe if I zoomed in more, you could see what I'm, what I'm talking about. But me being close up on him, I can see these things. So now I'm going to do the neck taper outlining with the razor and i'm just going straight down straight down there just to just to refine the line and you can see the difference that it made right there and just to let you guys know like when i'm using a blade that's exposed you got to be very careful because it can be dangerous you know if you don't hold it at the right angle if you don't use it correctly because when i first started using the exposed blades i noticed i was cutting a lot of people i would just nick a lot of people and I had to put it down for a while and just go back to the ordinary. And until I just picked it up one day and I, just ha I had a revelation that I realized what I was doing wrong. And maybe this is just me. I wouldn't say go out and try this, but this was just me. So now I'm just cleaning out the rest of his neck taper. You see, I'm stretching the skin and you see how I'm moving very fast through there with the razor. That razor action is very fast. I noticed when I use the exposed blade, it's not good when you're moving it very slow. This is what I learned for me. 
uh, when I'm using the exposed blade, I've noticed if I move it very fast, it cuts fast and there's not much irritation and you can cut the hair off really clean. Um, it, it's almost like the theory of ripping a tablecloth off of a fully set dining table. I'm sure you've probably seen this. They rip it really fast and then all of the dishes and silverware and everything will remain in place. Same thing here. You got to rip it, the hair off really fast. And this is what I've noticed. Uh, and that's what I use when I'm working with an exposed blade. I like to move very fast with it. So I'm now I'm going to do the back of his beard line. And this is very simple, uh, but also it's not very simple because you have to consult with each individual client. Some clients don't like it to go straight down. Some clients like it to um, follow the natural line because most guys' beards, especially if they have a very stout beard, it'll go backwards before it goes inward. And you need to consult with your client. But this client, this is what we're doing with him. You know, he's not too hairy, but he has he does have a nice enough beard. And I'm just following the line. Is we're, we're doing a round line as you can see and like I said each client is different some people want to square that off in the back this client chooses to round it so you know I wish I could show you each individual beard type and and who knows maybe I mean look subscribe guys subscribe maybe I will do this later uh, find another client that's willing to have me recorded and they have a totally different beard style that would be fun but for the here and now, this is what we're dealing with. And now I'm just creating this line. And if you're curious about, I guess, if you're curious about the products I use in this video, which I'm really only using these modded slim lines and my Feather Artist Club, I'll leave a link in the description below. Obviously, it won't be a link to a modded version, but you can do this mod yourself. And as you can see, they hit really well. I have the GTX Deep Tooth Blade. That blade is modified as well and zero gap so now i'm coming back with the razor and we're just gonna refine stretch the skin try and keep the blade as i wouldn't say as flat as possible because i like the blade around 30 degrees for me 30 degrees is the best for me i've, I've found that you know the the more inverted you go with the blade the more irritation there will be And I'm just doing both sides here. And now we're going to do the bottom portion of his beard. And I'm just basing it off of those two guides that I set when I did the back side of that beard. I'm just going to round it off and make sure it's straight. And of course, I'm going to clean up underneath. But back to the, the, the talk with the razor, uh, because I noticed a lot of people, they're very afraid using the razor and they'll move very slow. You have to be confident when using a razor, because if you're very cautious and worried about something happening or this or that, you're going to cut somebody. I've noticed this just from my experience. If I'm thinking about cutting someone, I'm going to cut someone and <clears throat> You need to be very confident in the way you hold it, the way you move with it. And of course, you're just going to get better with it. And that's what happened with me when I ha came back to using the exposed blade was that I was just I noticed I was just more confident using it now. And I realized the mistakes that I was making. And I actually, you know, a lot of things that I do, I, I try on myself first. So I took the liberty of dry shaving myself one day i did my entire head because i'm bald if you guys didn't know that and i typically use like a mach 3 or mach 4 uh to shave my head but this time i use a straight razor with the exposed blade and i dry shaved and i just wanted to see what discomfort i feel by using it is there any discomfort is it uncomfortable if i shave too fast and then i've noticed it actually feels pretty good when you shave fast now, of course, when you shave slow and th all of this is very uncomfortable. Now, of course, if I had product, I could shave a little bit slower because the product is helping the hair come off easier. But you don't have that luxury when you're dry shaving. It's just like pulling out 
an individual hair follicle by hand, like you plucking your nose hairs or your eyebrow hairs. It's just not that comfortable. So now that we got all the all of the hair removed, I, I, I just applied some talc before I use the straight, uh, the my Bronze Series 7 shaver here. And I like to use it sometimes because it actually helps the shaver glide. Once I apply some talc, it actually, it really does glide. I've noticed it, it does, it does help a little bit. It does help a little bit. So I'm gotta go every which way. As you saw when I was removing the hair with the, the trimmer, I had to go every way because his hair just grows every which direction there. So now we're gonna do his, this, uh, I guess the C, C cup. So as you saw there, I'm starting, I'm creating a marker there. And I'm gonna create another marker up top. And then I'm gonna connect the two dots. So it's basically like, I'm, if you look at like geometry, it's, I'm creating one mark. It's like A, I'm creating a C, and then I've got to connect it with line B. So uh, very, very simple, this process. This is one way to, to look at it and how to create this curve. Um, I know some people, for some strange reason, uh, I see people have a problem with this. Not sure why, but it's very simple. You know, until you can get comfortable, you can do it all at once. I've seen people do it, and you'll see me do it on the other side, uh, or I'll attempt. But right now, we're just doing this box. I figure while I'm here, let me do this box. And I want this to be about 90 degrees from his the front hairline. So once we actually get to the front hairline, you'll see what I mean by that 90 degrees. And see, now I'm just refining this curve because you want it to flow well, because of course I want this cur curve to flow with his beard as well. As we go on to the other side and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with, with the whole arching, we're going to try and arch. Now his hair isn't exactly ideal for this. Typically this works really good on straight hair or unless your trimmers are just zero gap to all hell and they're just absolute murders and will remove any type of hair. But these, these are hitters. They're not murders. So as you saw there, I tried to create that curve. You could, at some portion, if you look closely, it is there, but not totally. So now I'm just gonna come in here and just refine this. But that is one way that you can do that. Uh, especially it, th that technique and maneuver there works really good on straight hair, very good. So for those of you that are either looking to learn how to edge up someone with straight hair or even have a lot of straight hair clients, try that technique, it'll save you a lot of time uh, once you become good at it. Because if you hold it like a pencil, it, it's almost like drawing like a pencil, essentially the same thing. So now we got the curves created on both sides. Now I'm gonna go to the mustache. So I'm gonna start with the bottom. I'm just gonna remove the hair by its lip. Now you don't wanna go too high because you don't want to expose the lip too much where it just looks ridiculous. Now, if the client prefers to do that, that's a totally different story, but you don't wanna off the rip, just do that to somebody and give them like this little like monkey lip looking thing. So I'm gonna tap the top. He's keeping his mustache thicker. And of course, this is all client preference. So ask your client how they like their mustache design and they'll tell you, you know, whether they like it th thicker or thinner. Do they want it to go from thicker to thinner where it's thicker in the middle and it tapers off towards the end? Like these are all things you have to ask your client. And of course, you know, your clients will tell, tell you this. So if not, you know, maybe they'll ask you to do what's best. So I'm just now tidying off his, the little handlebar portion there. And now we're gonna get into the razor. So as you see here, again, I'm just moving very fast. Now in this portion, you can ask your client to stretch their lip. I didn't ask because I didn't really feel that it was necessary because I can get in there. Uh, but if you can't, definitely ask your client to stretch their lip so you can get in there. One other benefit of having them stretch their lip is it tightens up the skin so you don't have to run the risk of cutting them. So that's just one thing to keep in mind, guys. 
And again, you see the razor is moving very fast. Very, very fast. So I don't have to worry. So now we're going to connect his beard. Now, when I do beards, I don't like to use the trimmers on the beard. There's some times where a lot of edge ups, which actually you'll see in one of my tutorials here coming up where I don't use the, the trimmers at all to do their edge up. Uh, I'm not sure when, if that video is gonna come out before or after this, but as you see, I'm doing his beard with the razor. Now, of course, especially if I'm dry shaving someone, I'd I would much rather prefer not to use the trimmers then come back with the razor that's just too much irritation i like just coming in here with the razor straight away and creating the line i can get a much crisper line this way and i like to start at the bottom in this case it's a little different if i were just doing a beard it'd be i guess that would be another time for another video but for this one i started at the bottom same thing like i mentioned on the other side when we were doing the c cup the ABC method that a marker C marker and you connect the dots with the the B marker so up top is an a marker down bottom on his beard is the B is the C marker and then of course I got to connect a and B a and C with B so as you see I'm pointing out that little area like I said a few hair follicle hair follicles can throw off the symmetry of an edge up big time and you know all my barbers out there that are proficient in doing edge ups you know exactly what i'm talking about especially if you've done designs or anything like that it can really throw off an edge up just one hair follicle can make it just look a little out of whack now of course here i'm using the corners points and the heel of the blade uh, i'm not using the entire blade if i were i would accidentally push something back and of course I know this from experience. So again, I'm just pulling the skin tight because the thing with the razor and pulling it tight is you stretch that skin so tight that it doesn't skip over the skin and make it so easy to cut. The surface is really tight. So as you see there, you see those points. I just pointed them out there as I go into the razor. So I start off here. And of course, if you're curious, like wh what am I using to figure out where to take it down to? I'm, I'm using reference points from the other side. So I remember on the other side where his lowest point at the, at the bottom there of his beard in relation to his mustache. So I'm look, I, I paid attention to where the height of his beard was in relation to his mustache. And then I'm just basically repeating that on the other side. Uh, if you guys are curious a lot of this when you're doing uh, an edge up is reference points you're looking at reference points and little markers on their head face and then just matching on the other side uh, and of course one key thing with knowing uh, how to do an edge up is knowing what a good edge up looks like that's another key um, and I talked about that in a video that I made years ago I think it was like three tips on an edge up or so I, I can't remember but we're doing the front edge up portion and as you can see the the left side that you're looking at is a little bit lower the other side is a little bit higher so of course I'm doing this in my uh my suite here but I'm just doing the right side I'm just basically edging it up I'm not trying to put the put the finishing touches on this yet as I go to the other side I'm going to do the other side and of course I'm going to have to take a little bit off that left side but while I have your attention on the front hairline I wanted to pay I wanted to say this when you're doing someone's box and to make sure someone's box is even you need to look at it from the frontal view just to make sure the box is the, the appropriate size on each side because one side might be higher than the other because everyone's head edge ups is not naturally perfect it's not symmetrical and all you have to do is just go and put a line on it and you're good you do have to do a lot of matching a lot of using the reference points and you can see that right now as i'm doing this front edge up and about to take some of this hair off the left side you can see if you look at the bottom of his box the left side is lower than the right side and that's just naturally so i'm gonna have to bring up that that left side 
and you'll see me do that a little bit later in the tutorial so as i finish up his front hairline we're going to get into some razor work and we're going to get into matching up that box to where it actually it's even with the other side so you can see it there a little bit and of course you know say same thing pulling the skin and then just bringing the the blade straight up to the line i'm just cleaning up all of the little excess because those little small hair follicles matter i mean you could have your trimmers set however you like but there's nothing like that little finishing touch on the razor so as of course like i said you can't see i i can't see everything perfectly when i have the person straight in front of the camera so i actually had to take him away from the camera sorry uh, you guys couldn't get the view this is for me and so that you guys can actually get a good tutorial and not a crazy one so i had to go there and tidy up some stuff because of course i couldn't see so now i'm pointing out that and obviously you can see that it's, it's blatantly uneven but i'm gonna fix that and that's naturally this happens quite a bit guys and this is also why i like starting from the bottom and work my way to the top is that i can build a good foundation so you see how he came in and you're about to see how he left big difference and of course if you guys found this helpful please share this with anyone that you may know needs help in this area or if this was helpful for you or maybe you know be a gift to, some, to someone else um this video was a request because the original how to do an edge up video people were asking me can i do a full edge up can i do an edge up with someone's beard and here it is so i hope you guys found this helpful and for those of you that did ask i hope you guys actually watch this video and can share it but as you see very clean clean lines edge up don't forget to share comment like and subscribe it's been your man i do it signing out i'll holla